We're still talking about biased search for information as a distinct form of confirmation bias. In this video, I want to show you how the words used to ask a question can influence not only our likelihood of answering yes or no, but even our memories of events that we're asked about. Here's a version of a famous experiment. Subjects are asked to watch a video of a car accident at an intersection. Then afterward, they're asked questions about what they saw in the video. One of the questions is, about how fast were the cars going when they contacted each other? And they're asked to write down an answer. But for some subjects, they didn't use the word contacted. Instead, they used a different word like hit or bumped or crashed. So some of them are asked about how fast were the cars going when they contacted each other. And some were asked about how fast were the cars going when they hit each other or bumped each other or collided into each other or smashed each other. And then they're asked to write down a number for how fast they thought the cars were going. So what do you think the results were? I mean, if you had to guess, I bet you can see how this might go. The estimated speeds that the subjects wrote down were systematically higher depending on the forcefulness of the verb used to describe the contact. These are the averages. 31 miles per hour for contacted versus 41 miles per hour for smashed. So here's a case where one's memory of an event can be manipulated by the choice of words used to solicit an answer. If you think this is a big deal, then you're right. You can bet that courtroom attorneys are becoming familiar with framing effects like these and are incorporating this knowledge into their practice. You can bet that political pollsters are considering these effects when they create telephone surveys to send to voters. This effect can even be used to implant memories of events that never occurred. In the experiment we've been talking about, subjects were interviewed a week after watching the video. One of the questions asked was, do you recall seeing broken glass at the accident site? Now in the original video, there was no broken glass. So the correct answer is no. But almost a third of the participants who were given the smashed condition said they had seen broken glass at the accident scene in the video. Now some fraction of all the subjects said they saw glass, but that fraction increased with the force of the contact verb that was used, reaching its peak at 32% for those who were initially asked to estimate how fast the cars were going when they smashed into one another. These kinds of results, of course, have important implications for evaluating eyewitness testimony reports. We now know that the reliability of eyewitness testimony is affected by a host of biases, this being just one of them. The general lesson is that the way we search for information, and in this case, the choice of wording used to solicit information, can bias the responses we get. So that's biased search for information. Next, we'll look at a situation where biases arise from the way we interpret information. The video you just watched is part of a larger course on cognitive biases and critical thinking. You can find it on Udemy. Just click the link on the screen or in the video description to get a 50% discount on the sign up. Or you can find it and many other video courses over at the Critical Thinker Academy, where you can sign up for as low as $3 a month and get access to almost 20 hours of video training on a variety of topics related to logic, argumentation, and critical thinking.